Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your BBC Microbit. Doing this allows you to program it quicker and you can output serial data from your Microbit to your computer as I'm doing now. Here I'm getting a real time graph of light level with time. I'll show you how you can use this feature later, but first off, how do you check which version of firmware your Microbit's running? Well, when you connect your Microbit to your computer, it shows up as a drive under Devices and Drives. I'm using a PC to do this, but it's a similar process for the Mac. In fact, the Microbit drive will show up on your desktop. If you double click the Microbit drive, which is showing up as drive E here, you'll find two files, an HTML file called Microbit and a text file called Details. Double click the file Details to open it up and you'll find something like this, although it depends on which version of the firmware is installed. Look for the line which says either version or interface version and that's you. So this microbit has version 0234 of the firmware installed. To use web USB and program our microbit directly, we need at least version 0243, although I'd always recommend that you install the latest version available. To do that, head over to microbit.org forward slash get started forward slash, you know what, I'll put a link in the description. Scroll down and you'll find the latest version here. If you click on download the latest firmware, you'll end up with a new hex file in your downloads folder. At that point, you'll need to unplug your microbit, then while you're holding down the reset button, plug it back in. The microbit now shows up as a drive called maintenance. If you now go to your downloads folder, you can drag that hex file to the maintenance drive and the firmware starts installing. Once that's finished, the microbit again shows up as a drive called microbit. At this point, I would open up the drive by double clicking and see if we've been successful. When you double click the details text file, it should be the version you downloaded that's displayed. Now I'm in the make code blocks editor and I've written some code that allows me to play rock, paper, scissors with a micro bit. Before updating the firmware, I'd have to download the hex file, then drag it from the downloads folder to the micro bit drive. This can be a pain when you're trying to make quick changes to your code while testing it. Now I can click either here, the three dots beside the downloads button, or here, the cog at the top right of the screen, then select pair device. If I then click this button, I can select the micro bit, then connect. This time, when I click download, the code's transferred directly to the micro bit, with no need to come out of make code to drag and drop the hex file. If you do want a copy of the hex file, however, say to share it with someone else, give the file a name here, then click this button. Again, you'll find it in your downloads folder. Another great feature we can now use is the ability to output serial data from the micro bit to your computer. I'm going to show one simple example, although if enough people are interested, I can go into more detail in a future video. Just tell me in the comments below. So I'm going to drag down to where it says serial here and click, which gives me these options. I'll select the block that says serial write value and add it to the forever block. I'll change the name X to brightness, although I could call it anything. And from the input blocks, I'll select light level. Next, I'll transfer the code to the micro bit by clicking download. When I click show console device, I can view the data live from the micro bit, including a graph. I can pause it at any point and even output the data as a CSV file by clicking here. I could just as easily monitor the temperature, pitch or roll of the micro bit or the voltage applied to one of its pins. Now hopefully that's given you some food for thought. I'm off for a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. And as for you, it's time to update that firmware. If you found this video useful, then I'm sure by now you know what to do. If you have any questions or suggestions, then head on down to the comments section below. See you next time.